history has taught us that a thirst for war remains. Nations are in perpetual state of readiness for war. Armed conflicts in Africa range from tribal fights and ethnic cleansing to war between countries in the name of land, tribe, economy, power, politics and religion. And then there is a constant background noise of slaughters. The continent is blemished with the scars and wounds of wars past and present. One of the tragedies of war is the issue of refugees. The 1951 convention relating to the status of refugees defines a refugee as someone who, owing to a well-founded fear of being persecuted for reasons of race, religion, nationality, membership of a particular group or political opinion, is outside of the country of his nationality and is unable to or owing to such fear is unwilling to avail himself of the protection of that country. The refugee camp at Kokuma on the Kenya-Sudan border does not make news headlines anywhere in the world. Yet, it remains a constant reminder of the colossal cost of armed conflict that has rocked most of continental Africa. The Kakuma refugee camp was established in 1991 to accommodate the lost boys of South Sudan fleeing conflict and violence. Over the years, however, the camp has taken in refugees from many other African countries including South Sudan, Sudan, Somalia, Democratic Republic of Congo, Burundi, Ethiopia, Rwanda, Eritrea, Uganda, Tanzania and Congo Brazzaville. Currently, the camp houses more than 170,000 multi-ethnic refugees. There was a conflict in South Sudan. We started at Juba and people started coming. Uh, escaping from there, escaping killings, and uh, every day about 300 to 400 refugees from Sudan started coming here and they have been settled here. And to date now, from 15th of December up to now, there are over 26,000 refugees uh, just in this area. Every day, 300 to 400 people. A number significantly larger than what the facility was originally built for. The camp is administered by the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, UNHCR, and falls under the jurisdiction of the Government of Kenya, which, after the adoption of the Kenyan Refugee Act of 2006, exercises its control through the Department of Refugee Affairs, DRA. Kakuma, meaning nowhere in Swahili, epitomizes its remoteness. The refugee camp is accessible by just one highway on the Kenyan Northern Corridor. Swept by frequent dust storms, 
ravaged by high daytime temperatures and communicable diseases such as malaria and cholera and infested with venomous reptiles, this semi-desert region is grossly inhospitable to human habitation. The camp is a small city of huts roofed with tin sheets, tents and mud structures. Living inside the camp is equally prison and exile. Once admitted, refugees do not have the freedom to move about the country. Inside this small city, at the edge of the desert, children are born. They age into adulthood and their hope fades to resignation. At Kakuma, the refugees are almost completely dependent on international humanitarian assistance for food and other supplies. The scarcity of food in the region is aggravated by shortage of water and unsuitability of land for farming purposes. While there has been a constant influx of refugees, aid has largely stagnated or dwindled, stretching available supplies dangerously thin and pushing rampant malnutrition to life-threatening levels. Availability of clean water in the camp has been woefully inadequate and this has been a sore point for the refugees for several years. Some refugees trek long distances to reach the nearest water outlet outside the camp but when they arrive they are often prevented from drawing water. Refugee camps are invariably overcrowded and housing is of inferior quality. UN tents offer them temporary shelter. But they don't hold up long in the harsh sun, wind and rain. Most of the refugees live in handmade huts built of sticks, mud, metal scrap and discarded packing materials. Due to an ongoing wave of incoming refugees, the camp lacks the necessary funding to keep up with the demand for new shelters. Neglected by the government, housing is a major problem for the native Turkanas as well. Other problems worsened by the influx of refugees include hygiene and sanitation in the camp. High density camps present higher risks of disease transmission. Brickworks near the settlement leave behind huge excavations that fill with water in the rainy season, turning them into mosquito breeding sites and potential death traps for children. Fixing these problems have proven to be difficult because of scarce funds. A large section of the camp's population is very young, comprising children and young adults. As the camp became progressively multi-ethnic, it was important to avoid potential conflict situations and ensure cultural integration. As the sun sets across the vast continent, the Kakuma refugee camp plunges into darkness. There is no electricity here. Clearly for the children, it is a challenge to study under such circumstances. Employment opportunities for refugees are virtually non-existent. 
as they are forbidden to seek employment outside the camp. Violence between refugees of different ethnicities crammed together is a persistent problem. Sexual violence remains a nightmare, with hundreds of cases reported every year. One way of insulating the young from rampant vices is to keep them usefully engaged. It is sad to see so many lives wasted away, wandering around the camp doing nothing. They are from uh, Malakal, a city, a town which was totally ruined. Homes destroyed, it is worse than after a storm. Uh, and they are all just scattered. He does not know where his father is, where his mother is. In my place, I was studying, I was staying in uh, Nuba Mountain. And I was forced as a uh, soldier. I have taken to the field to be training for one week and a half so that to be taken to the war for the fighting. Then after that, I went for the war, 2002, the last final war. It is a time I got, I lost my hand and also my eyes. The bishop visits the churches to administer sacraments and arranges relief programs for the people. The refugees' natural talents for singing and dancing make their liturgical celebrations very lively and interesting. The prayers, otherwise repeated mechanically, comes alive in their life context when they call God Father give us this day our daily bread give us the grace to forgive deliver us from evil one of the oldest civilizations on earth the indigenous peoples of Turkana have lived isolated in Kenya's remote northwest for thousands of years. They are pastoralists and least literate. They depend heavily on relief food and medicine. Poorly sheltered and exposed to harsh climate, they are victims of many diseases. Relations between the refugees and members of the Turkana ethnic groups have been strained by several violent incidents. The focus of the international community is on the refugees and so they should not be the last Mohicans of East Africa. With world attention and charity being directed towards other crisis spots in the Middle East, resources for Kakuma are drying up and it is impacting the refugees who found sanctuary there. It is clear that more must be done to protect the ever-increasing refugee population here and provide them with adequate supplies.
The people in Kakuma, like all refugees, seek no pity but social justice. And without social justice for everyone in this world, none of us can or should live at peace with ourselves. Victims of politics, corruption and avarice, refugees are nothing more or nothing less than everyday people, caught in a vortex of violence not of their making. And those who suffer most are always the children. 